Stock friends, and welcome to this edition of Before the Bid. This is a podcast dedicated to the livestock sales industry where we go behind the scenes of the operation and speak straight to the sellers. We discuss topics about the important aspects of their operation, location, the people behind the prep work, and talk about some of the animals that will be offered to you, the prospective buyers. Hopefully, you've got your sale catalog close by. You might have to go look through that pile on your desk, but if not, Then you're probably like me and driving down the road or busy with chores around the farm. And that's okay, too. Wherever you are and whatever you're doing, I hope you enjoy this segment of Before the Bid. I'm your host, Andy Howell. Welcome, Livestock Friends, to this edition of Before the Bid. We go to Colorado. We go to Burlington, Colorado, uh, for this edition of Before the Bid, and we are going to a sale, the Plains Hotties Heifer Sale, and it will be held on Saturday, November 14th on SC Online, and so uh, we want to invite you guys to go and see that, and uh, you can go to that and follow along with us here on the podcast, or or continue watching the podcast video here, and uh, however you want to do that, that'll be fine, but we are talking to the uh, members of the Beaver Creek ranch and uh i'm talking to cole and bailey ridenauer and they are newly married here in september so they've got a lot of things going on and uh he uh cole told me they actually had to back up uh bringing in the steers and some things so uh we'll talk about that just a bit here and um we'll talk about their sale again on saturday november 14th and and it is the plains hotties heifer sale uh he sent me pictures of these heifers and uh man this is something that you guys are really going to want to check out uh some really high quality females in this and so uh want to welcome to the podcast cole and bailey ridenauer and uh cole you know you've you've got a little bit of stress trying to get things ready for a sale and how do you throw a wedding right on top of that well, it wasn't easy, I guess, but we, we we made it through it. We got engaged back in January, and we uh, we didn't want to wait around for a year or so to get done. We just wanted to do it and get it over with, and uh, it turned out to be uh, a fun time. We did it at my parents' place out at the ranch. Uh, with all this COVID stuff going on, it worked out really well, honestly. So uh, it, worked, it worked really well. Um, just one, one of the stepping stones to the fall. I mean, it was right off the right. bat, so... That's yeah, good good way to get it all started. Uh, just uh, makes it a makes it a little challenge getting cattle in, but uh, but things work out, right? Yeah, it worked out good. We had pretty much everything gathered prior, so it was just break in and daily washing and stuff like that to get stuff ready for the sale. And after the sale, it was hit the ground running and. It was time to rock and roll. So yeah, well, that sounds great. Yeah, we'll get into uh, we'll get into Bailey's uh, growing up and and some of the things that she's been into here in just a little bit. But but Cole, you told me that that you grew up in the the cattle. You grew up in the show cattle, and you you actually didn't even show out your your 4-H career because you were selling and and trading so many. So if you would, Cole, just give us a a little of your background and and how it started and kind of lead us up to to where we're at. All right. Well, uh, I'm 26 years old. Uh, we I uh, graduated college at Fort Hayes State in 2016. Graduated high school in 2013. 
we actually lived up in the front range up in the Greeley area. Um, when I started showing kids, 4-H, uh, family ran oh, 10, 15 cows, and I just kind of hit the ground running with it and enjoyed it. We uh, decided to expand and run a few more cows and just continued to fall in love with showing them. And uh, I showed at Weld County for two or three years, um, had some good success there, uh, mostly steers, did a few heifers when I was young, and then that kind of branched out. We ended up moving to uh, Akron, Colorado, on the northern eastern side. Uh, my father's job led us there, and we basically continued doing what we were doing, show, kept showing, enjoyed everything uh, that led up to it. So I mean, it was one of those deals, passion hit, and that passion just continued to grow, you know. And then my both my parents grew up in Burlington, and then we moved home, so I moved home when I was in seventh grade, uh, middle school. Showed three or four years there, uh, Kit Carson County, and of course State Fair. And then uh, about my sophomore year, we we were raising enough county fair stuff, and I was starting to sell them to some kids. So we decided to lay off a little bit and help these kids out. And I kind of switched species and went to a different, started showing hogs more and county fair stuff and stuff like that. And then uh, when I graduated. My sister kind of fell in the footsteps, and she hit the ground running. And, uh, she had a little more higher-up success than I did. Maybe she was better in the barn <laughs> than I was. I don't know. But she uh, she had a little more dedication than I did, I think, in the barn. But uh, it was a family win. Always has been. Uh, we did everything as a family, traveled to shows, everything you can think of. I mean, we were we just enjoyed it as a family, and that's, well, that's what our vacations were. We're going to state fair and Denver and stuff like that so and then uh went on to college got my ag business degree come back home started I took a job as a grain originator for a cooperative here in town and merchandise grain and then uh I got a job offer kind of like a, a dream job so to speak and I went down and moved to Texas I was down in Texas for about two years and I worked for a cattle operation called 111 Cattle. Uh, 111 is owned by Trey Yates. He lives in New Mexico. And then it's managed by Eric Drager. And he's he lives on the ranch in Texas. So we uh, I managed the show barn and the show cattle side and the cell calves and that kind of stuff there. And uh, then uh, my grandpa got real ill. So then we ended up moving back home. And... Uh, Basically, kind of started our own deal again and started Beaver Creek Ranch, um, owned and operated by Bailey and I and my parents. And we uh, we run about 30 to 40 cows now, and I do more trading than stuff we raise. Um, uh, that's about where we are now. Um, two years, three years ago was when Bailey and I met each other, and we. Uh, she has the same passion, loves it as much as I do, and honestly, we can't we can't wait to have kids and get going in it ourselves. So, yeah, that's that's about where we are now, leading up to this point in time. Do you remember uh, some of those? What what got you started in in wanting to trade cattle? I mean, was it just selling some of yours and then? finding some every once in a while or, or how'd you how'd you get into the trading because like you said you you've been trading these things for a long time you know it wasn't something that was ever planned i guess you know everybody dreams of raising that great one and uh i mean it's it's hard it's it's not easy and it takes a lot of cows to raise right. a real, real good one but um we started selling a few of our own that we raised. And when I was in high school, I mean, I had more cows in high school than I did now. Um, just thanks to my dad. I mean, he did a lot more work than I did. But we uh, we made it work, and we are selling a lot of local 4-H kids some stuff. And, you know, that's the point where I was either running out of calves or the guy I used to buy calves from, he always had a handful of little ones, uh, you know, some extra ones. And he said, just take them and see if you can sell them. Mm -hmm. and uh that's that's pretty much how it started and it started by taking two or three a year from the guy i used to buy them from and uh now it's up to 50 60 head a year now where we're trading so 
Yeah, well, that, yeah, started out small, and and now I'm I'm sure you've expanded out and and going uh, quite a few different places to to get some more cattle to trade. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're uh, we are trying to get some stuff. We I, I we're out looking more Colorado, of course. Uh, I mean, I got there's a, a guy north of me that I get a lot of kids from, and uh, he's raised a lot of good stuff over the years, and we uh, we get a lot of our stuff from him but there's eight or nine families here in colorado we we usually go through and get their job we were working in the canvas more um i like to branch down in new mexico a little bit we'll see how it kind of goes here and we like to branch out and hit the road more and go see if we can find some more cattle this next year is kind of a goal that i have um mm-hmm. but we'll see how the, the year leads up to it so yeah, and easy, fairly easy to go into to Kansas. You guys are you're located there at Burlington, Colorado. That's that's on the eastern side, and and you say you're you're pretty close to Kansas, right there off of Interstate seventy. Yeah, we are about oh, ten to fifteen miles just west of the Kansas border, uh, right along I seventy. The ranch is about three miles south of I seventy. Um, we're actually the ranch is actually south of Bethune, which Bethune is you know, just 10 miles west of Burlington. So it's, we're only about, oh, 20 miles from the Kansas border where the ranch is, and then you go back south about four miles. So it, it's a good location mm-hmm. for it. And, uh, I mean, hey, we'll, we welcome everyone to come by and say hi. So, I mean, it, it works out really well. Right. So some of these guys out east, uh, uh, you, you say you've been right there off of 70. Why uh, some of these guys out east going to Denver, why they've been by there several, several times, I would guess. Yeah, we try to invite anybody that can come out. Uh, you know, the rough time, I mean, I-80 is a big, big travel area for a lot of the big guys in Iowa. Um, mm-hmm. We, uh, I mean, boy, that'd be two hours, we're two hours now and uh of i-80 but we uh we do get a fair amount of traffic you know of course everybody wants more but for for where we are three years later we're we're slowly working up there and we got goals set and we're hoping to keep growing what we're, we started yeah probably uh probably just a little bit less traffic here come january than than what usually is uh coming right down there right through 70 headed to denver you think yeah, it, you know, January is a good time for us. We just, for people traveling, but we just don't have anything around, really. You know, this year might be a little different. We'll have the Bulls, but we'll kind of see how that goes. And um, But without Denver this year, it kind of puts a wrench in some of that stuff. You guys usually show at Denver then, uh, and you guys have had some success at Denver, you, you told me. Yeah, we, uh, we, we've, sh- I've showed there since I was little, every year, never missed a year. Um, now we, oh, the last three years we've had, a handful of prospects and fats go each year. Um, we're busy. We have a crew that goes down and helps us and um, try to do the best we can to help all our families out. And, but, yeah, we uh, we uh, had a very successful year back in 2015. We had a family that are actually from Burlington. They had the reserve steer at Denver um, market show. It was a calf we bought. Um, he was raised. Um, the guy that raised him just lives about an hour and a half north of us. Uh, so I used to show cats from him all my life. That's the guy I was talking about earlier. So mm-hmm. he ended up going back to Wade Rogers, and then I bought him from Wade. And then Wade and I ended up selling him to a family here in Burlington. And uh, never won a class all of show season. Actually, let me take <laughs> that back. His entire show season, he never won a class. And then he ended up falling the class winner overall reserve at denver so it was one of those deals you'll never never forget right it's funny uh how sometimes those those young people are like oh this this one isn't any good we better turn it out or or we're done with this one because he, he can't even, he or she or whatever can't even win their class and then uh come you, you get them just right and, and things happen yeah come to the point where it needed to matter he, i mean it comes through i mean it was we all knew he was kind of unique and different and uh, he had a bright future, and we actually uh, this year we sold a half brother to him this year and last year. So uh, his half brother last year is supposed to go to Fort Worth. Um, not sure what's going to happen now, but uh, the one uh, this year actually is going to 
the plan is to go back to Denver in 2022 with him. So we'll see how that goes. But, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, it was a team effort. I mean, all the way down to the breeder, to um, RCC and us, and to the family. So, I mean, it was it was a fun experience. Yeah, sounds like it, and and uh, it takes a lot to takes a lot to get to one of those, and and even do well, and then to come out with with reserve. Why, um, got to got to be a pretty uh, pretty big goal off your off your list there. Yeah, it really was. I mean, it was that stuff don't come around very often, so you you take it when you can, and it's well earned when it does. Right. Yeah. Uh, when we'll get to we'll get to a few more success stories and and a few more goals, but I sure don't want to get too far away, uh, without without stopping and talking to Bailey just a bit and and uh, getting some of Bailey's background and and uh, she may have a little bit different story of of how you guys kind of got together and and uh, what she thought than maybe what you do. You think, Bailey? <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Bailey, give us a little of your background. Yeah, so um, my name's Bailey, and I'm originally from Calhan, so it's actually about an hour and a half west of where we live right now. Um, so growing up, I showed, and we were, I mean, we showed at County State, same, same as Cole, I, I haven't missed a Denver, and I can't even tell you how long. Um, mm-hmm. So we showed, my sister and I probably batted our eyes just right one time, and we got our parents to get some mini Herefords. So we played in that (laughs) a little bit. Yeah, and Mm -hmm. actually they still have some. So maybe it wasn't only us that liked them. But um, so we did that for a little bit, um, showed all of the above. So Cole's mom actually swears that Cole and I met at a jackpot show in high school. And I mean, she's probably right, but we both don't really remember it. But who knows, maybe we did. After I graduated high school, I went over to Northeastern Junior College here in Sterling, and I was on the livestock judging team there. And then I went to Colorado State, same story, livestock judging team. And then, mm-hmm. so they, there's a show, um, it's called the Green and Gold Showdown, and it is held in conjunction with the blackout that the Showtimes puts on. And so the block and bridle group at CSU puts that on, and I was I don't know if I was smart or dumb or what, but I, I volunteered to be the chairman one year, and um, that's actually kind of how Cole and I started because I asked him to sponsor, so his favorite thing to tell people is I asked him for money, and that was it, <laughs> <laughs> and haven't stopped, right. I guess. <laughs> but, the, the, that was the version yeah. I got, that, that you asked him for money, and he said, okay, and then that got you guys started. So <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, but that's really what it was for, okay. Exactly. I, I did ask him and some of his buddies to sponsor, and that did happen. And then I guess we just never really lost touch after that. I um, I graduated college in, in May um, of 17, and then I actually moved to Iowa. Um, and I worked for Solvent Supply for uh, about a year and a half to two years. Um, and mm-hmm. during that time, Paul and I never super-duper lost touch. Um, it was hard because... I moved eight hours away, and then that's when he decided to go to Texas, and so we kind of just followed our own paths, but we uh, we found our way back to each other. So um, mm-hmm. after about two years um, of being on the road with Sullivan's, I moved down to Texas with Cole, and um, we found our way back to Colorado. So we, like we said before, we live in Burlington, and I work for Purina now, and I sell feed and tubs to local producers around here, and that's kind of the the gist of it, I suppose. Well, that's that's great. That's good. Did now did Cole get any insight with you working with Sullivan's? Did did Cole get any insight on you know new products or <laughs> anything like that as he was down there showing? Uh, yeah, a little bit. Um, not really, <laughs> though. I guess because um, so when Cole is at one eleven, so Eric um, Drager, who is also a part of one eleven, um, he is a pro staff. For Weaver, so so oh. I would I would always be like try to give Cole a flare sweatshirt or something and just to see how it worked out and give him a can of flare every once in a while and a couple times he he played along but he never used it and definitely never was taken a picture of. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been uh that would have been real fun to to harass yeah. each other you you him yeah. and and him you with with the different products that's that's yeah. that's a neat story 
Yeah, it was fun. And, you know, there was a couple times at Junior Nationals, I was working for Sullivan's, and he was there with 111. And so we, it was fun that he, he had to be so Weaver and Bailey had to be so Sullivan. So it was kind of fun. Yeah, that's a neat story. That's yeah. good. <laughs> that's really funny. A good, th- good, uh, good way to get you guys to harass each other and have a little bit of fun at the same time, and and uh, maybe not. We both don't have to be super biased now, which is kind of nice, and we just kind of do what we want. <laughs> Right. Yeah. Well, that's good. Now, have you got him? Have you got him influenced at all with this mini Hereford thing? Is he interested in that thing at all? No. I mean, we tried. So, so we actually. <laughs> it was funny. So my sister, my sister was a freshman um, at Lincoln at UNL, and so her final show summer, I guess, season was last summer. So two summers ago, we sent her a heifer of ours. Um, for her to show and because we wanted somebody to show her and so she showed her and we were like okay you can get her bread well funny story my sister tried twice to get her bread and couldn't do it um but i don't know maybe she just let the bowl in so we actually did have one of our <laughs> better heifers get bread doing mini um <laughs> two years ago <laughs> which is funny um having ease, i suppose on a heifer right <laughs> yeah i would think so yeah yeah that might be you might have started something there yeah, I don't know. That's about the closest we've gotten. I mean, he's clipped a couple for my parents, so that I mean that counts, I guess. <laughs> but we don't own right. anything at this point. Okay, well that's neat. I'm sure, I'm sure in the future, if there's a little girl and she gets her eyes at Cole, I don't know if he's going to say no. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've I've got a little girl of myself that that batted her eyes and. Uh, uh, I guess I'm lucky I'm strong-willed enough because she batted her <laughs> eyes plenty, and, and she that was all she ever wanted, and uh, she didn't ever get one. So, uh, But I, I'm sure uh, she still loves them, and, and I'm sure you and her could, could talk many herfs for a long time. Oh, yeah, it's fun. So, it is fun. That's, many herfs are just that, big attitudes, let me tell you. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's great, Bailey. Uh, I guess I guess what uh, I'll keep you on here just a little here, and and what ro- role did you pick up when when you came in? And and I know you guys are kind of starting this together, but but they he was kind of already established a little. What what role did you have, or or do you have to to come into this operation? So I just kind of um, do I guess what needs to be done per se. Um, so, as I said, I work for Purina, and so I, um, we've come in and made some rations for ourselves, and so I do that. I also um, am, am the feed girl, so most, and it's mainly because Cole is, you know, clipping one in the barn, and it's about to get dark out, so Bailey goes and does, does chores. And so I do a lot mm-hmm. of feeding, um, so, so that, and then anything... Uh, like graphic design wise and by no means am I a professional or do I claim to be anything of the sort everything is pretty self-taught and so um, I do anything that's like a flyer for us I do Um, Mm -hmm. I also do all of the social media work I actually didn't have a ton of interest in it until Cole and I got together and wanted to do this and so all of that has been self-taught. Um, mm-hmm. Anything from like an apparel standpoint, I kind of um, tag team with Cole's mom. She loves embroidery, and she actually has an embroidery machine. So she makes hats, and her and I mm-hmm. kind of we go in the craft room and make sweatshirts for all the customers and things like that. And so more of, um, I guess, that standpoint, uh, Cole needs help pulling one. I'm not going to say no either. So right. it's kind of what anything that I can, um, I try to do. Well, that sounds awesome. Maybe I'll put in, put in an order for a, a Beaver Creek hat. <laughs> yeah, we, we can whip them up. We can, I think we can get our Beaver Creek hats done in about five and a half minutes. It doesn't take too long, honestly. It's also a, a whole different art. It's insane. That's really neat. Good deal. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, well, you'll have to, have to keep working on him on that mini Hereford thing. <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe when if we ever change our logo or something, I'll slap Mini Herford in there and see if he catches it. <laughs> there you go, there you go. Now Bailey, yeah. you you had a show background and things. Uh, did did you guys have some some successes and things that that you could tell us about? 
Um, sure. I mean, I never, um, I wasn't ever really involved in like a major win at Denver or something. Well, I guess we had, we did have reserve mini one year, um, female mm-hmm. overall one. I can't even tell you the year, to be honest. It might have been in like 2011. I, honestly, I can't remember. We also had champion mm-hmm. bull at Kansas City one year, but again, I honestly, I'm sorry, I can't tell you. <laughs> I couldn't tell you dates. Um, but we showed um, very hard at the county level, um, and you know, it's Always a famous thing that one year the hardest shows to win is your county fair, and um, I actually didn't get one until my um, very last year. Um, oh wow! Actually, yeah, so we didn't. You know, I was tried, and I felt like I was knocked on the door. But um, so my final year, I won it, and actually my sister was reserved, and so I'll probably never forget that that the, that my final year, my sister and I won to our county fair so. That was me. I mean, I had a couple of class winners um, at, at the prospect show in Denver and stuff like that. But um, mm-hmm. you know, made sales at State Fair every year I showed. So I guess the little successes for me. But mm-hmm. yeah, it was. I mean, again, nothing that I could all ever regret. I mean, growing up showing is incredible. It sounds like you guys were were meant to work together. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Uh, tell us, uh, we we talked about the steer at Denver and things, but but you've been around this a long time and, and moving quite a few steers. And so, if you would tell us tell us a few of those other successes that that you guys have had. I had pretty good luck when I showed. We uh, I had a few county food champions and reserves. There was uh, the one one of the most memorable. There's two really good memorable years. Just myself was uh, one year. Uh, the uh, guy that I used to buy calves from, that was just north of here, he uh, had two calves, embryo, it was a split embryo. They were split embryo, mm-hmm. embryo. So we had two, two twins, identical. You could not tell them apart. And uh, one of them, his nephew, ended up showing as a puppy calf. Um, the other one I bought. And then I ended up getting the other one. So I had both twins. Funny story, the one that up to calf could not process any type of, like, textured feed. He'd blow on any type of textured feed. It was kind of strange. So we ended up feeding this thing silage. I mean, it was, you know, more of a roughage, and that's all we fed him. And mm-hmm. anyhow, he ended up winning the fair, and the brother was reserved. So, hundred pounds <laughs> difference. Identical twins ended up winning first year at as a first year in Washington County, and I moved there. I took two two identical twins and uh, ended up uh, getting one two with them. So that was a pretty unique deal, and having something like that with an embryo split. So that was pretty cool. Um, I always like to uh, when I showed. At our county fairs, I always like to try to one up myself every year. It was this kind of a goal I had, and I set a goal before I bought calves, and that's what I did. You know, I wanted to win it with a uh, black and white one, or a baldy, or a market heifer, or we actually one 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 year I had a, a steer that we ended up cheering them completely off for fair. Um, oh wow! Which not normal for this area and uh he ended up winning it as a slip shirt. so he was built good enough and that was a pretty cool experience and then the next year as the year i said well i'm gonna go for it all and try to do the market heifer and ended up doing the market heifer that i raised with uh that guy up north so it was pretty unique um now we were we are doing the best we can to get some county fair wins with their families now and we're having some good success working towards uh trying to get some some of the next level some state fair stuff trying to get some kids and some good homes some better stuff we're trying to trade a few more better quality stuff higher quality and we're starting to starting to compete a little more on the next level i mean we're we're getting there i mean we my sister in the reserve one year at state fair um like i said before she she busted her butt and she earned it. I mean, it was a family win, but she earned it, and uh, that was that's another memory we'll never forget. Because I tried for 
I only showed at State Fair my first two years and my last three years. So, I mean, I didn't show mm-hmm. there every year. And my last three years, two years, actually, sorry, first two and last two. My last two years, I, you know, you try to go for it all, and I couldn't get it done. I sat third mm-hmm. in class down the Grand Reserve both years. So, um, it was a fun experience, and I'm glad my sister was able to get it done. So, uh, that was another memorable one. Um, we're slowly just getting out there. I mean, like I said, we're starting. We're three years into this, starting to build our program. Mm-hmm. And we're we're we had oh we had seven or eight county fair champions last year, so that was good. And mm-hmm. uh, just slowly getting there. So I mean, there's we've kind of told kind of our our big wins, but you know the most important ones are the county fairs. I mean, that's where our bread and butter is, and that's what we like to do is. Um, get out and help these kids go get some wins at county fair. Right. Tell us, uh, tell us about your your young people program. You you told me earlier that you know you're and one of the reasons why you didn't show your last couple of years was because you wanted to help these young people and and tell us what that looks like uh, a little here. Yeah, like I mean, so I I, I quit showing on a sophomore. Quit showing at county fair as a sophomore. I switched to a different species, and you know I was starting to sell. A few kids with some um, local kids here at our fair and uh, I was a junior and senior in high school and it was really mean you know everybody says you know you get 10 years to show and you'll regret if you take one off and you know I took that I took a year off and then after that I said you know what I'm, I'm enjoying this seeing these eight nine year olds go do it so it was really fun seeing these kids come out of that ring with a smile on their face and ever since then that's that's when I knew I want to do this. This is what I want to do. I want to, I want to teach the youth and grow the youth in this in this industry. It's not a, it's not an easy industry to do, and it's really fun to see kids who are really passionate about it and learn and evolve from. And that's the best thing is seeing these kids grow from eight years old to uh, eighteen because there's a big difference of what this industry does for these kids. Mm-hmm. And now you're putting on a few clinics and things uh, for these young people as well. Yep, yep. We tried to, you know, when I when I was eight, nine years old, I went to uh, some steer walk clinics when I was little. Uh, Kurt taught me a lot about uh, the cattle industry and fitting and clipping, and um, it just hit me, and I just, I really enjoy it. And so we kind of, we're nothing like that. We don't do anything. We don't travel to do them, really. I mean, maybe one day that's a goal I have. Maybe one day start doing a few outside. But we try to do two a year. We try to do a daily hair care before we go into the uh, killer around here, around in April, first part of May. Uh, calves start going in the middle of May. So we try to do a daily hair care, bring all the kids in, do a demonstration, answer questions, and then we also do like a – uh, product talk and a nutrition side of things. I mean, it really benefits well with um, Bailey being a Prina rep and uh, helps out quite a bit. So we, we do that. And then uh, we also like to do a showmanship clinic. Um, that's more of a – we do more of that uh, privately at each kid's homes because I feel like the kids get more out of it. It's just a lot of time, a lot of travel, and trying to work schedules out with everyone. But – we try to do a, a small clinic. Everyone brings their calves if they can, and we kind of just do like a mock show. And then Bailey and I and my father go around, and we kind of go through and give kids pointers and see if we can up their game a little bit and teach them and teach them the fundamentals. And as they grow, then we start working on the little things that we need to, to make them a, a great showman. So it's really fun. We enjoy it a lot. And that's the main reason why I started doing this is for the kids and I love helping the youth, and um, there's nothing better than seeing a, a kid walk out of a show ring with a smile on their face. You're exactly right, and and all these young people, uh, all these young people need a mentor, and and uh, I'm I'm sure you've got some families that that mom or dad or somebody will say, well, I've told them that three times, but if you tell them, then they'll listen, right? No, oh, I've I've heard that a million times, and I know my dad will tell you the same thing. <laughs> My dad and I right. butt head so hard in high school when I was showing, but now I mean I thank him for everything he's taught me because I was the same way. I had to hear it from someone else, even though Dad may have 
screamed it in my face until it was blue, but it didn't matter because it was coming out of his mouth. Right. It's funny how that works out, isn't it? It really is. And, you know, just one simple word from someone else goes a long ways. Yeah, and that's that's great that you can do that for for those young people, and I admire that and uh, enjoy hearing that. And and when you said that when when we first started talking, I thought, man, this this guy's this guy knows what this thing's about. So uh, I think that's great, and and uh, want to just encourage you to keep that going and and uh, help these young people get there. So and and we'll tell them about some calves here that that you can help them uh, with that in in just a bit. But uh, before we go right into those cattle, tell us. Uh, a little about your your cow herd and and what you're doing right now and and what you're planning on doing in the future. So basically, like kind of like we talked earlier, we're kind of in a we uh, after we moved. So when I moved to Texas, I sold all of our cows that we had. I mean, I didn't have very many, just a handful. And I went down to Texas, and a great one of the greatest experiences ever going down there, learning from them and seeing the whole seeing the show cattle on the different side of things that I've ever seen here. When you start looking at the slip shearing side of cattle, you really learn to uh, study your cattle different and mate mm-hmm. your your cattle differently. I mean, there's a whole different ball game to breed cattle for true um, power, true muscle, true structural correctness. You can't hide nothing with hair like you can uh, up mm-hmm. here in the northern side of stuff. So that was a that was one of the greatest things I ever did. And I taught my, my, my guy that was well known and knows what he's doing. And um, it was great. I mean, it was great experience. So I'm taking that, trying to incorporate that what we're doing now. And that's one thing that we uh, about two years ago when we moved back home, we started our reboot process and we ended up buying 40 cows. We run about all oh, five or six donors, about three donors, and then we got three uh, donor prospects this year that I think are real nice. We are going to do, we're about, uh, we've been about 90% AI, 10% embryo work, you know, so we're going to try to redo, we're going to flip flop it this next few years, and we're going to try something else. We're just going to flush a few big cows and turn the rest into resips and see if we can do something there. And we're going to try to go about 90, 10 the other way. So we'll see how that works. Uh, we got, um, my father's got a real good little moss cow that's built real good. We're going to flush two or three times here this winter, put some eggs in, and then uh, uh, Billy and I got four or five cows, three cows and some three donor prospects that we're really, really excited about. So we got, all different kinds. I mean, we, we bring more for the northern stuff and this these hair shows than we do the slick shirt and stuff, but all that stuff goes back into when you start thinking about mating and you try to breed some of that stuff back into them. But uh, we're slowly um, progressing our cow herd and changing what we've done to try to change with the industry and what the cattle industry is launching now, which changes all the time. and the type of cattle that people want. I mean, you got. I mean, people ain't buying on them. I mean, you're breeding them wrong. I mean, you you gotta go with the times. You still gotta stay true to what you like because you. I mean, you ultimately you're the one who looks at them every day. So it's just kind of one of those deals that you gotta you, you gotta play both sides of that. And um, we feel like we got three heifers, um, uh, donor prospects that we think are real nice. You make bread stuff that I think will be pretty pretty cool for the future. So we hope they click it. If not, then we'll find out now. So continue to work. Yeah, that's great. Trying to always always grow and always get better and. Uh, I, I admire that and, and uh, changing things. And you're you're as much clubby b- b- bread as you are production type bread. Is that correct? Yeah, I mean our donors, our donors are more predominantly clubby bread, crossbred stuff. I mean, uh, for our uh, my father's in Unamasa, the Semangus uh, deal, so she's mostly more of a commercial. Pedigree type deal. I mean, Una Moss is known in the Sydney world, but I mean, like, um, when you look at her, she doesn't look like a clubby cow. I mean, Bailey and I are more like one of our donors is a purebred Angus that we think is real good. 
Um, and then we got a silver cow, and then uh, we're working on our donor prospects, which are clubby stuff. And then we got a, a real good Here I Am workhorse that's clean, um, not built like a typical Here I Am, and we think she could be pretty unique down the road. And uh, that's why we kind of decided to keep her. She was actually going to go on the sale. And then actually uh, three days before we picked her, we decided to pull her. So we decided to keep her. Can't, you can't make them like that very often, and I, we think she could have a bright future. Um, we also got a big God we trust maternal perfection that's clean that we think is pretty unique as well. And then we also got a, 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 a little more of an older school bred stuff, which the embryo was bred by 111. Um, she is a yellow jacket heat seeker, which would be a full sip to the mother that raised the reserve steer at Denver in 2016. So there's some bloodlines there. Uh, we feel like she could have some good potential down the road. So we're slowly trying to get some different pedigrees, different matings, and see what we can work with. That sounds really good, and, and you've got some some uh, really good prospects to offer uh, these young people or, or whoever else might want to uh, purchase those and, and go on with those. and. Uh, are you are you ready to start talking about those guys, those ladies? Uh, we sure can. Um, okay, uh, we can do that, and we. I mean, really, let's talk of um, first. Uh, I mean, let's talk about the steers a little bit here. I just want to. Okay. Uh, we had a, a steer sale back in October. I mean, that's our main. I mean, that's our main deal. Is we do steers, we trade steers more, we do anything, and um, we probably sold. Oh, I don't know, thirty to forty steers this year across the. Mm-hmm few states and um you know that's that's where my passion is is you know watching them steers grow and watching these kids learn from them and stuff like that but uh always looking for new families on that steer side so i mean the heifers are more of a product, production side of things we feel like both cows but um the steers is what we're, we're really passionate about for to see these things getting the kids in the hands so yeah very understandable yeah, but then you've you've got these heifers. You you say you 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 keep trying to raise steers, and you keep getting really really nice heifers. So you've you've joined in with a buddy, and and you guys are gonna gonna be in this uh, the Plains Hotties heifer sale. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We uh, yeah, we uh, bred with steers, and we ended up getting a few really good heifers out of the deal. And we're waiting back for some DNA testing where we feel like these things can be real good cows or we feel like some of these are going to come back clean and be real good production females but yeah we end up partnering um joining together and doing this production female cell with uh family uh this north of here uh freely cattle company uh chance is two years older than me and his wife ashley and um their son benton and they just actually had another boy today actually uh, uh trey so it was really good news to hear that we were a little worried chance is a little worried that actually might be going uh, during the sale. So I'm sure they're a little glad that uh, they got him out and ready to rock and roll in the heifers. So, but yeah, we're really excited to do this with them and um, grew up a chance showing and we're, we're real excited about it. Yeah. Well, that's, that's good. And yeah, I didn't realize he, he was, uh, they were that close to, to having one. So, so that's great. I don't know what's, what's a little more nerve wracking getting a, Wedding ready about sale time, or, or having a youngster about <laughs> about sale time. <laughs> right, coin flip. I'm sure that goes both ways. Each are great in their own way, with their own stress in their own way, right? Yep, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that's it that's interesting well that's neat yeah here i felt i felt for you having to get the get the wedding ready but shoot i th- I think having a youngster right here this close to sale time kind of trumps that yeah i think they they, they beat us on that one there's no doubt about that they, they beat us on that one <laughs> at least ours was a month prior to sale time theirs is a week before so right right he he won up you that time yeah he did as we've we've mentioned and and we'll talk about here the the sale is on sc online sales and it is going to be held saturday november 14th and again it's the plains hotties heifer sale so uh cole if you would let's let's talk about these heifers just a little okay so we kind of put a variety together um 
Chanson and his dad have been since they run a, a main operation, which I mean, they, they do mains and semis, and then they do a few club calves. But um, so they they have more of the mains and semi influenced stuff. Um, we threw we got some purebred Charleys, we got some uh, some papered sim solutions. I mean, we got we got a little bit of everything. We tried putting a little bit of everything. I'm more the crossbred side of stuff. Stuff I've gathered, stuff I've raised. Um, we we feel like we put together a pretty strong strong uh, 23 head for the sale that I think are going to be awesome production females down the road. And we're really excited to hopefully, I think it's going to get up tomorrow. We'll have it posted tomorrow, we hope, and then uh, we'll let everyone see what we see. And hopefully, hopefully it goes well. Yeah, well, they can they can go through there. They can watch them on the podcast video. Uh, a couple different ways that that they can watch these. Yes, yes. So yeah, it'll be posted on FG. Uh, and for any questions, uh, our contacts are on there. You can call Bailey or I or my dad or Chancer Vincent. I mean, we love to talk talk, talk cattle, and uh, we're we're excited to hear from everyone. But we're we're pretty excited about what we have to offer. You sent you sent me pictures of these, so so I can kind of look at these when they go along. And uh, man, and when after you sent them, I showed Brandy, and I said, "Man, look at this! Look at this set of heifers!" And we were trying to figure out which ones we like the best. And uh, I still don't know if if we know yet. But uh, this lot one uh, that that she told me she's she's pretty she's pretty cool. Yeah, she's pretty unique. She's a a primo closing bell, and I, I can't tell you a whole lot about this one. This one's chance raised. Uh, but we feel like this thing is unique for main Angus. I mean, the way this one is built, I mean, from the ground up, the body mass, the squareness, I mean, this thing is this thing is the real deal. I mean, whether you take her to the ring or you keep her in your herd, I mean, she's going to produce. I mean, she's built good, super sound. I mean, that, that thing is a real deal. We're pretty excited about that one. And I saw her as a, uh, over the summertime when she was feeling the cow you know, 300 pounds, and we felt like she was by far the one that needed to lead the sale. So I'm pretty excited about her. There's no doubt about that. She's she's pretty neat. Yeah, she is. She's she's pretty striking. This The other effort that, that you kind of want to talk about, you want to talk about Freak Neck one. Why, uh, this one kind of fits that bill. Yes. The next one's a maternal maid that Chance raised as well. You want to talk about pretty and style, and this one's got it. I mean, she's... She's not as big footed as the other one, but she's awesome, awesome structured, square built, good bellied. But she she offers a little more freaking nature to her up to that one third and comes out of the top side of her blade good. That thing's gonna be an awesome cow down the road. I mean, no matter which way you go, kind of wise to breed this thing, I think she's gonna produce. I mean she's she's unique too. Now is the lot three? Uh, do I remember right? The lot three comes from you. Uh, lot three, we found. Uh, she is a Wax Alone uh, Easy Money Mini in Focus. So this thing is. Uh, we're still waiting on DNA on her, but we're th- <clears throat> we're thinking this one's going to be clean. Um, we're well, we're hoping so. She's she's pretty cool. You want to talk about one that's built different for a Wax Alone? Um, this thing has got a smooth shoulder, long neck, but this thing gets out and moves like a cat. I mean, she's built good. I mean, you got the depth of body, squareness of hip, the extra mass that you get, but not too much to where she needs to be shown with the steers. And this one's the flexibility that this one offers compared to some of these walks alone is unique i mean uh, she's not that monster footed biggest legged one which i think is very valuable um and the way you can breed this one and we i think she's going to come back clean and we hope she does but this thing is built really neat we've had uh really good interest in her uh we put a video of her on facebook a while back right after i clipped her and uh, just the brute broodiness and feminine style this one offers is pretty unique we think she can she'll have a bright future raising some some of them them steers to go out and compete i mean i think she could be one that can raise a great one one day yeah and, and you can see some of these on on your uh cold ridden hour 
uh, Facebook page. Mm-hmm. So uh, just a, just another place to, that they can go and, and look at some of these. Yep, we have uh, Beaver Creek's got a Facebook page, Freely Cattle's got a Facebook page, and I try to share everything that we put on Beaver Creek just because we don't, I mean, Facebook's not, our Facebook page hasn't been up long enough to have a lot of followers just yet, so we're working on getting that. And so we try to share it as much as we can to get out and broaden that out. But, yeah, help yourself, look at whatever you want. Um, we try to put up Snapchats as well. Um, it's hard to keep it up with that social media, but we try to do our best. So. <laughs> <laughs> we try we try to do the same thing and it's like holy cow how many it's hours tough. can we spend on this thing i don't know how people do it all day long because it's it's tiring yeah yeah so. but uh if i had cattle like these i'd i'd uh want to be putting them up there and uh so we we go to a little color here the lot four we've got a kind of a gold kind of a butterscotch yeah she's more i, I don't know what you want to call her butterscotch orange i guess whatever you want to call her um Mm -hmm. we think this thing is pretty cool i mean this thing is like when people start breeding for these steers they're you know you start looking at some of these pedigrees and there's a lot of these things that come out and they're probably bred still but the cows are clean or built different and we feel like this one's not built so much like a steer where you can go back and breed her breed her back to some of these uh high power club calves or club bulls. Mm-hmm. So this is a monopoly trump train that we found um, uh, a guy north of Colorado here. You, I mean, you want to talk about one that can get out and move from being clubby bred on both sides is pretty unique. I mean, this thing is square made, um, good bellied, awesome hair. And uh, this one is one that, I mean, you can, put your kid on it and go show her in the show ring and have some fun. I mean, you're not going to get over to with this one. I mean, that extra added color really pops. And, um, we feel like this one could be pretty unique down the road for uh, the show heifer and even for a uh, uh, cow. I mean, that's, that's what we were trying to uh, gather was more brute stuff and, uh, for production wise. And we feel like, this one could do it, you know. You want to start raising some of them peach colored ones, or you want to start raising some color, this is the one to do it. Yeah, she's uh she's really nice and, and like you say, she's gonna get caught. She's gonna get caught and seen when she walks in. Um just just with that just with that unique color that she's got and um you've got a you, then the the next one you we've got a little color here on this uh lot five. The she's silver silver, smoky, whatever you might want to call her. Yes, sir. I, I mean, I this uh, this is a silver heifer here that we raised. Uh, I bought this cow uh, just south of here, um, about 25 miles, actually. Uh, about uh, this would be her second calf. So first time we ever bred her for club calf. Uh, first year she just had an Angus calf, and uh, actually we sold him last year to a family. Um, but uh, he was just a calf. Um, this heifer is kind of was the starting point of this this cow and this thing. We feel like this thing is unique. I mean, you want to talk about a soft haired silver one, and this one is as good a haired as a silver one as you can probably make one. I mean, she is she cut all the bills and this was for color one. I mean, sound, good structured. She's got a good foot on her, uh, big legged, square hip, super soft middle. You know, I, I, I like to see this one maybe a little bigger third front third i mean she's good extended she's got a little leather but you know to me that don't bother me in the production side of things because i think you got to have some of that for these good feeding uh club calves i mean not all the best feeding ones are uh um thin necked goose necked ones i mean they got to have a little maturity in them otherwise you're going to look too youthful in the ring in my opinion so i think this thing is this thing's got all the tickets um She's uh, waiting on DNA on her, but I, I'm going to say she's probably dirty looking at her hair. Um, but I think she's good enough bill where you can go back to some of these clean bulls and she's going to hit a home run one day. You just, you just got to find out what it is. But uh, we, we're very high on that one. She's probably she's my favorite one that we have to offer on our side of the sale, um, not just because she's ours, but I think she's just built real good for a silver one. It's hard to make them not get built for silver ones. 
Yeah, she is neat, and and you're talking my language on that front end. We we don't need to get into a to, into a big discussion about about do they need to be slick necked or do they need to have a little bit of neck. But but I'm telling you, you're you're talking my language, and and I can appreciate one that's got just a bit there. Just to, they got to have something to grow into. So oh yeah, got to have maturity in there. Right, right. We probably better uh, probably better get off of that before we <laughs> before we go off on that. We better talk about this uh, lot seven half blood semi. Uh, yeah. So this lot seven uh, is one we found up down the road. She is a county O brilliant. So this thing is um, a half blood paper uh, stem solution or percentage semi, however you want to call it. Um, mm-hmm. You want to talk about one that balances and that just tells you, like, hey, I'm here to produce. This is it. I mean, mm-hmm. this is a cow uh, spit image. I mean, this thing is going to raise – whether you go back to sims, uh, semis to start doing production side things or if even you want to go back to club calf, you know, she's she's not the best-haired one, and you're not going to the way that one's bred, but she's sound enough and built good enough where you can go – Back to some of these real big haired club kids, and you're going to get some stuff. I mean, she's good sized. Um, I mean, pretty made for a semi. She's good throated, good to her chest. I mean, awesome balance, big bellied, um, square made. I mean, this thing's pretty unique for a, a semi deal. I, we, we, we're pretty high on this one as well. I mean, we think this thing's going to really strive and step out from the others when it comes to production side of things. Yeah, she's she's my kind, and that when when you sent these to me, and Brandon and I were flipping through them, I went back to this one, and I said, "This one's this one's my kind. I really enjoy her." Yeah, she's she's what you. I mean, you don't talk about you got a herd of thirty of those. I think mm-hmm. you got a pretty good cows because I mean it's hard to make them like that and still be that good structure and that good looking. And I mean that's we all try to breed those great ones and. You know, it's it's not easy to do, and but when you get close, I mean, you you got something that's pretty unique. Mm-hmm. And versatile. You can go you can go different ways with her, and uh, I like I like that about her. Yeah, and like I said, I mean, I think that you can go back to a production side, or you can show her in the ring, or uh, go back to club calf on her. I mean, you you got your options are endless on stuff like that. I believe, and I think it's good to have a, a different variety when it comes to your production females. If you got something you can only go one way, then I think you're limiting yourself to um mm. the ends and the goals you can meet for these cows. Did Bailey help find her? What's that? Or was this all you did Bailey help find her or was this all you? No, this one I found. She wasn't with me when I found this one. <laughs> <laughs> but probably happy time. when you got her there. This, this one, she says, yeah, yeah. This one I found on my own. This one, family that shows calves that buy calves uh, steers from us. They raise a few, and mm-hmm. this is where she come from. Was a family just north of here, so she's she's built pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, she's a good one. Yeah, and then we've got you've got uh, Charlay, another one you want to talk about? Lot nine. Yeah, we got two pure Charlays on there. Um, the one that really hits me hard is a. Uh, She's a, a wide open um, Prince Turton. Um, this one, you know, if, you, if you're just getting started in this show cattle deal and your kids are young, this this is the one. I mean, this thing is dog gentle. I mean, this yeah. thing is this thing is for your first year kid that you know you don't you want. Everybody worries about their first calf on their little kid because they don't want to get hurt. I mean, this thing is not going to do that so if you're looking for a perfect showman one for your young kid this is it but then if you study her and look at her i mean this thing screams cow i mean this thing is built good i mean for charlay she's unique she's big footed and she's honestly she's pretty good haired for a purebred charlay i mean it's square good necked i mean she, she could be a tick prettier but you know what in this charlay world I, I don't think that matters um, cause I think you stood, like I said, I think you need to have that, um, good belly, good ribbed. I mean, moves around like a cat. I mean, the thing is, she's pretty unique too. I mean, for a Charlay, I mean, and that's what we wanted to do was try to find a balance of different 
options for people, not just go all one deal. We wanted to try to find some different things and find different people's needs. And, you know, this one, she papers and she'll, she'll, you I mean, you can take her and show her and uh, bring her back home and raise paper charlets or, you know, I mean, how many of them yellow steers out there are out of Charlet cows? Just, I mean, there's a ton of them. So, I mean, she's got the potential to do both things as well. I agree. She's got that cowy look and, and, uh, that's even better that she's dog gentle. Those are, those are really fun ones to have. Oh yeah. They're, you got to have a fun experience here for sure. I, and I tell families that all the time. I say, you know what? You got 10 years, your first couple of years, go have fun. Let your kid mm-hmm. enjoy it. Enjoy what they're doing. I mean, it's nothing worse than a little kid who's afraid to go walk up to their calf. I mean, they got to be able to be confident at eight years old to go put a halter on and lead this, you know, 1,300 pound animal around to come fair time. So this, this is the one, um, this, she's got a lot going for her. We really, we really think this one's nice. And we want to invite everybody to look at the others. Uh, again, you've got, you've got 23 lots, 23 head in this sale. And, and we talked four or five of them here, but, uh, again, do, do want to encourage those others. And, and I'm sure they can get a hold of you anytime, uh, anytime they have any questions. Once they see this thing on, uh, either the video podcast video or see it on SE online, uh, they can they can check with you guys and and we're uh, during recording we're about a week and a half out but uh, are these cattle there at your place that that everybody can come see? Yes. So um, going back to the phone deal, yeah, you guys can uh, call, text any one of us. Um, we don't answer. Just we'll get back to you. I mean, it's no big deal. We'll we'll get to hold of you. And cattle are available viewing uh, anytime. Uh, they're located. They're all here in Burlington. Um, if you look at our Facebook page, we got a flyer up from our steer sale and it's perfect. We can put it up for the heifer sale as well. It gives you directions right off I-70. Um, but we encourage everyone to come out and look, uh, sale day. We're going to try to do a viewing. We'll have all the cattle out on the sale runs and, um, we welcome everybody to come out. We, we're a little far out to know what the weather's going to be like yet, but, um, we hope it's nice. It might be cold to bundle up, but. We welcome. It's definitely not going to rain. Yeah, it's not going to rain here, so you don't have to worry about rain. <laughs> we're dry. Have that issue, huh? Yeah, we're we're dry as can be. I mean, it's it's dry here, so. But yeah, you everybody's welcome to come out and look. So. I invite everybody to to come look, and and I'm sure if they need a different look at them, you guys can shoot them another video or or something like that, uh, if they need to. I would I would assume. I usually kind of save up a bunch of cell phone videos that we'll start posting on Facebook and Snapchat of each one. And we, uh, we post, uh, tag numbers, um, along with it. So that way we can give an identification of them. And we, uh, we'll, we'll feel free to send you guys anything you want. If there's something different that you guys don't see and you want to see, we can try to we'll work our best to get it for you. So we're pretty easy to deal with. We help out and do what we can. Yeah, and again, that sale is uh, on SC Online Sale Saturday, November 14th. And so, again, uh, I want to invite you guys to do that. And, uh, Cole, before we go, you've got another sale coming up even uh, after this. You, you're you selling steer. You're in the steer selling business. Now you're in the heifer selling business. And you've got another one coming up here sometime in January. We decided we're going to try something different. I mean, we, we're out. I mean, we're, heifer deal is kind of a... I do, Bailey and I talked about doing different this year, you know, uh, we love, we love seeing cattle and we love placing cattle and we wanted to try to do a heifer deal. So that's so we went ahead and did a heifer deal and we ran in part and chance on it to do something different and offer more lots. And, uh, we're excited about that. But we, uh, as you were saying, we, we, we decided to do some, another deal. We're going to try to do a bull sale come in. We're, we're planning on doing it, uh, in January. Uh, we're going to offer uh, a little variety. I mean, there's going to be a heifer bull on there, um, mostly clubby bread stuff, but there's some eternal clubby bread stuff. And then we're going to have some hey, we all good as it gets. Uh, we're going to have a couple walks alone, a couple of egg bluffings um, that we're pretty excited about. We, uh, <clears throat> we're going to have a small number. We're going to have very many, but we're going to, I think the quality is real high on them. And I think we're, we're pretty excited about them. We think they're, unique made for bulls in my opinion and uh, you know it's hard to find good bulls around here for cleanup and or even you know you want to use some for 
to try to raise some county first stuff or state first stuff, whatever your end game is. But we're pretty excited about what we got to offer, and we're hoping to do it in January. We probably won't start advertising and stuff like that till December, but we'll we'll do it online as well. And then uh, pretty excited for what we got going on there. What event are you going to have right before there? Another wedding, another baby, another anything like that? <laughs> <laughs> I hope nothing. It'll be traveling. It'll be steer shows. I mean, that's uh, some. This will be the the heart of all the the fun jackpots, the winter jackpots. I mean, we'll be going. I mean, if you see us in any jackpots, I mean, feel free to stop by and visit. I mean, we'll be going to uh, we'll be going to Nebraska AGR. We'll be going to Kansas Beef Expo. We'll be going to uh, OKC Arizona. I mean, we'll we'll be going to all of them. So we'll we got some fats going. We got. Uh, a couple pretty good fats going to Arizona. We're pretty excited about. So we're we'll be we'll be around. That'll be our our uh, busy time. But hopefully there's no more weddings or there won't be any babies along the way that I know of. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's great. Yeah, uh, it's always uh, try to try to steer clear this time. We, we got the one thing taken care of. So yeah, we'll have enough shows in our way to worry about, let alone other distractions. So. Good, yeah. Cole, Bailey, it has been so much fun getting this thing ready and and, uh, talking with you guys and meeting you guys and and hearing your stories and and hearing about these cattle. And, and again, I want to wish you luck here on the sale coming up on uh, Saturday, November 14th on SC Online Sales. And and good luck with your first heifer sale. And um, look forward to working with you here maybe on this bull sale and and, – I uh, want to wish you luck here at these other shows. So, uh, any, anything else we need to know before we before we wrap this thing up? No, not really. I mean, we we love to talk cattle. So, I mean, if anybody has any desire, I mean, just want to just visit. I mean, pick our brains. I mean, we love to hear how people do things, and we learn from our own family the day in day out. I mean, we we take that to better ourselves, and you know. I'm a firm believer that kids teach you and we, we truly believe in that and we're always open to talk and listen. So, I mean, feel free to call and text us, whatever it is, we all will be here around and listen. So. I really admire that and admire you uh, working with those young people. So, again, Cole, Bailey, appreciate it very much. Again, everybody, Saturday, November 14th on SC Online Sales, uh, the uh, Plains Hotties Heifer Sale. So, uh, if you would, look for that. And, and again, Cole, Bailey, uh, appreciate it very much. And uh, we want to uh, thank you for listening to another edition of Before the Bid Podcast. Thank you for tuning in to this edition of Before the Bid. For more information and to learn more about upcoming podcasts and sales, visit us at beforethebid.podbeam.com or Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram pages. For information on being a guest on Before the Bid, please email us at beforethebid at gmail.com or one of our social media pages. Remember, that's beforethebid at gmail.com. Happy sales to you, and we will talk to you next time on before the bid.